Amen. Good morning. 
Anybody have a praise in their heart? Are you still grateful and thankful? Can you find one thing to give God some praise? Hallelujah. Let's bless God in this place. We just want to welcome you to Dunamis Life Church, where we want to experience everything in his presence. I don't know if you realize that everything that we need, the essentials for life, is in him and is through him. When you read his word, it's all about, he says, it's by we move and we have our being because of him. Yes, we have our own strength, a portion of our own strength, our own mind, our own will, but ultimately your best life in here and in that which is to come is all through him, the abundant life. And so we just thank you for joining us. We want you to invite someone to church, just share, copy and paste the link, text, text someone, tell them they'll get up, wake up, it is time to praise the Lord. And so I'm Pastor Psyche Wilcox. I just want to welcome you, welcome you, whether you're your first time visiting with us, being our guest, or you just seem to be a continual guest. We thank you for being with us. And due to Miss Life Nation, we are glad to have you. It is so good to see you in the place. Amen. Shout us out in the comments. Say good morning to someone. And we're just glad that you're here. I'm so excited. Because God has been so good. He is so good. And so we want to just open up in prayer. We want to prepare our hearts as we prepare for worship. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, most high, we just thank you. You, you are great. You are worthy. We thank you for in our sound mind. God, you are a mind regulator. When we think about all that we've been through and going through, God, you are our peace. You are our anchor. You are our hope. And we just want to glorify you on this morning. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. If it wasn't for the reality of who you are in your life, we would have fainted and lost heart. But God, because of how real you are, how good you've been in the midst of everything, we are yet able to praise you. We are able to lift up your name. We are able to find refuge in you, your presence as a strong tower to us. Your name is powerful. And we thank you for the authority that which we have. And so we ask you now, just as we humbly come before you, desiring you to be used, desiring you to be the headliner, desiring you to be um, magnified through us. So we ask you to bless us now as never before that we may be able to uplift your name. God, that someone will be encouraged today. Someone will receive a breakthrough of what seemed impossible will, be, will become possible in you. God, we just have great expectation of what you're going to do in this moment. We're ready here waiting and we're participating in the move of your presence. And so we ask you to bless us yet once again. We thank you now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. We want you to prepare. Come on, where you at? If you're at home, stand up. Prepare to bless the Lord in this place. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many of y'all know that our God is awesome? Amen. That there is nobody like our God. There is nobody like him, nobody who compares with him. You can search all over and you will find nobody like him. Amen. So let's declare, God, you are awesome. Come on, y'all.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we want to bless the Lord. Amen. Because she is worthy to be praised. We want to make God happy. I will bless the Lord. Amen. So let's go for it and let's bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And all. And all.
Let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah. 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 Let me hear you say, Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy of the glory. Amen. Bless God in this place. Is he awesome? Come on. Is that your reality? Are you sure about it? Are you fully persuaded? We are just so grateful that we're just lending ourselves to God's use. And we just thank God for those of you that are joining us in the sanctuary as well as online. I am just grateful. And again, I just want to, if you're just joining us right now in this moment, we just want to welcome you to Dunamis Life Church here in Camden, New Jersey and beyond. Amen. We thank God for it. We actually have people viewing from multiple places outside of the state of New Jersey, and we're just so grateful. Um, we cannot take for granted. You know, you can't take life for granted, and God has been faithful. And I just want to go over a couple of things. I want to um, just go over a couple of announcements. This coming week, starting on t tomorrow, um, we have Vacation Bible School, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 6 p.m. here. We're going to be indoors, Amen right? Because we still seem to be in this little heat wave that's going on around the country, but we're going to be inside. And so it's not too late to make a decision. One, to come and volunteer. We're going to have food and snacks for the kids. There's so many different ways that you can help. So if you are available from, uh, for volunteers, they come 30 minutes before the event. Amen. So if you're available from 5.30 to 7.30, that way you can help us set up and tear down and, and, and wrap up and clean up afterwards. But for you, or you parents that want to come and bring your children, VBS starts at 7 p.m. sharp. 
six, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. sharp, right? So we want to be able to see you there. Just bring your children. We're excited. This is an opportunity for us to be a blessing to the community so that we can um, continue to kind of impact in a way that is significant in people's lives and in children's lives. So I'm asking you to come out and, and join us. Um, and that way, that'll be a great help to us. Also, um, on the topic of volunteers, we are looking for volunteers even for our media team. There's different things you can do, whether it's help us out with our lyrics, learn the soundboard. There are some skills that you can learn by apprenticeship. And then learn by doing, whether it's sound, you don't have to be a, a genius, you just have to be intelligent, right? Just to be able to learn step by step. So whether it's sound, whether it's the camera, whether it's um, our lyrics, our scriptures, our media, we're looking for people to help us out on the, um, on, on the media as well as greeters, because we, we are welcoming, even though you know, the COVID is still present, amen? So we're not trying to pack out the, the space here, but we definitely are allowing people welcome to come in and experience God um, in the building. And so we're just grateful for that as we continue to just govern ourselves well and to be good stewards when it comes to our health. And the other thing is the, the food pantry. We tremendously, um, I think it was uh, Friday, I, I got a voicemail um, all in Spanish on, on, on we got a voicemail. And we have volunteers, again, if you're a bilingual, that would be of great help to us. And so we were able to help a, a, a new mom that had a newborn and a two-year-old. I had someone translate uh, the voicemail, and then they were able to help us by doing a three-way call. And then the mom came yesterday, and she was so blessed to be able to come to a food pantry and to get pampers and formulas for her baby. Amen? And, and I, my only condition to her, she was so excited. I said, now, don't you go resell this. You hear me? <laughs> Because it's like liquid gold or powdered gold out there on the street right now with the shortage. But she was so thankful and so blessed. And I'm grateful for technology because when she got here, we both said we only speak a little bit. But Google Translate, how many know Google Translate, amen, can make it work. <laughs> so I, I am just so grateful. And, and that is really what it is to me to be salt and light and to be community, right? And for us to be there one for another. And I'm just so excited about that. But we could use um, help with the food pantry. So whether it's stocking, whether it's unloading the truck once a month, there is still an opportunity for you to serve. So being a member of the church or being part of community is just not being a spectator. Amen? It's not just about viewing and receiving, but there's a great blessing that the scripture talks. Just, it is best to give, to give of what you have, not what you don't have. So your time, your service, and even your talent. And so I'm just so thankful um, for that and everything that God is, is doing. And on this coming week on, well, actually, because we got VBS. I was about to say, meet me on Zoom for pastoral <laughs> teaching. But we're going to start that, resume that. So that'll be um, the following week, okay? Um, so we're going to have our midweek. I'm going to be teaching. I have some um, a great uh, teaching series planned for you because I am for you know, just developing you, having you to be your best self, right? And a lot of things, I, I, I've said this a couple of times this week, talking to people. I mentor a lot of different people, and I tell them that, you know, your goals and your dreams requires a different version of yourself, right? So you have, as you can continue to grow and as God continues to bless us, you have to be a, a better version of yourself, Right? And the thing about it is a lot of times we get so comfortable with not changing, but we want the best version of somebody else. Okay, I just slid that right on in there, right? But that's the God's honest truth. So I just want you to be your best self in so many ways. So because of Vacation Bible School, we will not have any midweek, but we will be here in the building with VBS helping and ministering in any way that we can. Amen? And so we're going to, um, at this time, we're going to worship God through our giving. And it's amazing that I know what it's like to have more month than money. It's, it's, it's barely paycheck to paycheck right now because you can't even make it to the next paycheck before running short. So it's not even have more month than money. And so if you're in the building, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. We'll, we'll serve you. Uh, for those of you online, prepare to give electronically. Thank you for those who've already sown. I just love it. That people that we have discipled our members such that 
when they sit down and if they're going to do any other financial thing, they're going to actually say, let me give God his first and then I'm going to pay my bills. Or even before service starts, they already begin to sow. And that is also a blessing of, of online. And so I'm so appreciative of the generosity of our congregation. And even those of you that has partnered with us in your heart, I do not take it lightly. And so I, I appreciate you. Amen. So everybody gets something that you can sow, amen, whatever it is, whatever your best is for God. That's honorable. And if you don't mind, can we, can we just stand? We just stand before God. And I'm, I'm just going to bless before you sow, whether it's online or here. Gracious Father, we just are so grateful. We cannot thank you enough. For the very fact that when we're looking to sow, what we're holding in our hand, whether it's our phone or whether it's an envelope, it's amazing how when we sow, again, not out of obligation, but knowing that we have an opportunity just to honor you, to sow you and to keep you first in our life, not just with our time, not just with our service and our talents, but also with our tenth and with our treasure. And so, God, we don't give to you right now out of manipulation, but it's out of gratitude that, one, that we have something to give. That that which we're holding in our hand is evidence of an increase into our households. And we are yet thankful that inflation is not a canker worm that's going to eat up our money. But you are multiplying. When we give to you, you are multiplying. You're blessing that which remains and allows it to be productive beyond what we can expect. And so we thank you for being our provider. We're trusting you for daycare fees. We're trusting you for tuition. We're trusting you for the school uniforms. We're trusting you for our rent. We're trusting you for our mortgage. Because we recognize that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And so, Father, we sow right now. And I ask for a special blessing upon everyone. For their hearts and their generosity. So bless us now. And receive this, that it will be honorable before you. We just thank you. And we will give your name the praise and the glory. We will thank you daily when we just begin to see how you've blessed us and added unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may go ahead and sow. Hallelujah. My heart is just so grateful. He, God is after You may be seated. We're going to prepare for the word. And I, I'm, I'm so grateful for our leaders. And, and if you remember again, and if you've been viewing, I want you to continue to pray. Pray for our media team. Pray for our, our worship team. Pray for our, our musicians and stuff. Because they have been, somebody say steadfast in serving. They've been there. Clutch and ride or die. And I just appreciate also, our, our leadership team and, 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 and our um, ministers here because, and you're going to hear from one of, one of God's best on this morning. Amen. And I want to say something about, when we talk about ministry, we're talking about volunteering and what it means to minister. The word minister, what comes out of it is servant or to serve. When you look at its original language, right, it means to serve. And I tell you, this person has a huge servant's heart. She is a servant leader. And a lot of times we get caught up in looking for a place. Instead of looking for a place to serve, we are looking for a place to shine. And so we get it mixed up. There's no doubt that your gift will bring a shine that glorifies God. But too many of us are looking for titles. Too many of us are looking for a place to shine instead of to serve. And I am so grateful for um, Pastor Courtney um, on this morning. I'm not going to do like she do me, give the whole legal name, Leander Bolden, you know. Uh, I got the mic today, y'all. <laughs> but I am so grateful because I had to juggle a couple of things on this, in the, this week um, that I share with you. But it's good that you kind of have people that you can kind of lean on a little bit, right, when you're doing ministry. And it's not just her. It's actually... You know, this whole um, volunteer team and minister team that's day in and day out. And so we're doing this series with the fruit of the spirit. And she exhibits that so greatly. So I'm looking forward to being fed. Anybody ready for the word? Amen. You're entrusting God to bear some fruit in your life. Amen. And so let's receive right now, Pastor Courtney.
Amen, 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 amen. Very glad for this blessed opportunity uh, to, to serve by way of sh sharing the gospel, amen. Amen. This is a, a, a privilege and an honor. Um, I, I don't take it uh, lightly, but I, I thank God um, for the opportunity to be used for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our musicians. We thank you, God, for our volunteers, Lord. Thank you so much for this blessed opportunity to come before you. Lord, I ask right now that you will help me to decrease and that you will increase in this place, that your word will come forth with power, with transforming power to set the captives free and to spread your good news. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So, so we've been learning about uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. Now the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. That's a series we've been going through. And so what, we're, what we've started going through now is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when we think about the indwelling Holy Spirit, and I use the word indwelling strategically and specifically because when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we accepted him as our personal Lord and Savior, amen, when we, we believe that God resurrected him from the dead, then we now have access to the indwelling Holy Spirit, amen. Before the Holy Spirit rested, amen, he, he rested upon us. But now, because of Jesus Christ, he now indwells within us, amen. So, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 16, amen. Turn with me to John chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 7. All right, John 16, we're going to start at verse 7, and I will be reading for you out of the King James uh, Bible, amen. All right, so John chapter 16, verse 7, it says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And verse 8, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9, of sin because they believe not on me. Verse 10, of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Verse 11, of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. And finally, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall, you shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. Amen. So, so this, is, this is Jesus talking here. Jesus is explaining that I have to leave. And the disciples, they're sorrowful because they don't want Jesus to leave. We understand that. They don't want him to go anywhere. 
But he explains to them but that I have to go. Because if I do not go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. And you don't understand, the Holy Spirit has to come. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to do a lot of things. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to rid the world of sin. Now, this is important because if you know something about the disciples, many times when Jesus was explaining things to them, they didn't understand what he was saying. They would often speak to each other and they'd be like, I don't know what he's talking about, but um, I'm listening, right? And even when, when Peter said, thou art the Christ, Peter said that. And Jesus, Peter didn't know that he was really speaking a whole lot of truth. But Jesus told him, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Amen. It was the spirit of God that revealed that to Peter. And so our understanding before the Holy Spirit, before Jesus came, our understanding was, was darkened. We didn't have a very good understanding of a lot of things in the word of God. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, this is what Jesus said. He's going to rid the world of sin. Amen. So how will he do this? How will the Holy Spirit rid the world of sin? What you have to understand is that because of what God established at the foundation of the world, when he established the earth, he gave man dominion. Because he gave man dominion, man has authority in the earth. You understand? That's why God didn't just come down and, and, and transform people's hearts. He just didn't come down and make people right. He just didn't come down and, 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 and put the devil in hell. He didn't just do that. Why? Because he established the rule. The rule is man has dominion. So that's why Jesus had to come by way of a man. You understand? He couldn't just come down and say, hey, I'm the son of God. He couldn't come down in all his glory. He had to come by way of a man. And the same thing, the only way that the Holy Spirit is going to rid the world of sin is through man. He's going to rid the world of sin through us. This is why Jesus, this is why Jesus said, the comforter is going to come, and guess what? He's going to dwell within us. Amen? He's going to dwell within us. So until the day of Pentecost, as it states in Acts chapter 2, the disciples didn't understand a lot of stuff. They still were puzzled. But in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit manifested, they began to understand everything Jesus was talking about. They understood the resurrection. They understood that he was the Lamb of God. They understood the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit because he had finally come. Jesus had ascended and the Holy Spirit now manifested in the heart of man. Amen. Amen. So the Bible often talks about, you know, how he, he, he talked to the disciples. The, the Bible talks about that these things must be done by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, not by power nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Amen. So the Holy Spirit has several roles. Amen. He teaches us. He comforts us. It said in, in John chapter 16 that he's going to lead us into all truth. Amen. Remember, it cannot happen unless it happens through us. Amen. So he indwells us to transform us and then to transform the world. Amen. Amen. So we have dominion. Amen. So man, 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 man has the ability to make things better or to make things worse. 
So the condition of this earth is because of man. Now, we, you want to blame it on God? You could do that if you want to, but you are incorrect. <laughs> God gave man dominion. So, but man's ability to make things better depends on who or what is leading man. So everyone, so we have God, we have the enemy, both are pulling for man. Both of us, both of them are trying to influence man. But it's up to man to make that decision. Amen? Amen. So let's turn to Romans chapter 8. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8 in your Bible. All right. I'm just setting a, a foundation for the Holy Spirit. Amen. John Acts Romans. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after who? The Spirit, capital S. Amen. Amen. It says, verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh... God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God sent his son as a man. Amen. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's mosey down to verse 13. It says, for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Verse 14, it says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Now, we've been saved through Jesus Christ. We have access to the Holy Spirit. He now indwells within us. But Romans 8 and 1 says there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That means you're saved. But guess what? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What that means is you have a choice. Amen. You have a choice to choose who you're going to follow. You, as long as you're on this earth, you can always choose flesh. You can always, you always have that option. But there is no condemnation for those who choose to live according to the spirit. Amen. So this is what you've got to understand. Now, when we accepted Jesus Christ, we, we received the new birth. We are not just flesh and blood, born of the, the water, right? Blood and water. But we are now born of the spirit. So now we have to learn to live according to the spirit. And so before we struggled, right, we couldn't choose the right thing. But now we have the Holy Spirit to help us choose the right thing. And so now we have to find our rhythm in the Holy Spirit. We have to figure out, and we figure that out by coming to church, right? Studying the Word of God, spending time, how to flow with Him. How to say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, show me. Amen. When you spend enough time with Him, there should be some evidence of that. Amen. What's the evidence of that? The fruit of the Spirit. Uh-huh. That's what we've been talking about. There should be some evidence of you, of, the, of you walking or having your rhythm with the Holy Spirit. It takes time. It doesn't, it's not automatic. It takes time. We grow. Amen. But you have to find your rhythm. And the most tragic thing is many believers have been saved for years. 50 plus years. 
60 plus years. I'm not going to go over that plus years, but still haven't found their rhythm. They haven't learned how to walk, how to live, how to, to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance because, and this is why our world isn't transformed yet. Amen. Amen. We say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are the kingdom. We're the kingdom. The Holy Spirit manifests the kingdom within us. That's why Jesus said the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is here. It is here now. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, as he leads us, as we seek his leading, as we seek his guidance, he teaches us how to choose him. Amen. And so, and I don't know if you guys remember, as soon as I started deciding to read my Bible, to learn the word of God, I, I, I experienced more conflict within myself. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for y'all. Like, it didn't used to bother me to do things wrong. You know, I didn't see it as wrong so much. Amen. It was just, you know, hey, it's natural, right? <laughs> but, but when you get to know the Holy Spirit, you get convicted because he convicts us and he teaches us. Amen. That's an indicator. That's an indicator. Amen. He convicts us. You know what? That was wrong. I, 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 you know what? I hurt that person's feelings. You begin to be aware of some stuff you, you weren't aware of before. You didn't used to care how, what such and such thought about you before. You didn't, you didn't used to care. You would t speak your mind, go about your business, and say, her feelings hurt? That's her business. You remember that? Oh, maybe, maybe that was just me. That, that could have been just me. That, that wasn't y'all. But, but for me, amen, I had to, I started to get convicted. And so now my conviction, you know, the enemy rolled that conviction and tried to bring, bring, a, uh, bring about guilt. But the Holy Spirit came in and he said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. I got you. We're going to work through this issue. But the good thing is you recognize that you have an issue. You understand? You cannot come to God if you don't think nothing is wrong with you. You have to acknowledge, you know what? I'm sinful. Amen? Paul tells us that there is nothing good in the flesh. And so now we've learned how to lean on the Holy Spirit. We're constantly, Holy Spirit, show me. Constantly, Holy Spirit, teach me. I don't understand. It's his job to teach you. It's not your job. It's his job. But many of us, we take on his job. Amen. And that's why we don't have it right. But that's okay. We're going to learn. Amen. 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 Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 20. Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 20. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, amen. All right, now I'm in uh, King James, you guys know that. All right, Matthew chapter 7, it reads, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree Bring it forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, cut down, and cast into the fire. Verse 20, key verse, wherefore by their fruit ye shall know him. Amen. That's old King James. The bottom line is, we know you by the fruit you produce. Amen. You know what spirit, what heart you, you, you live by according to the fruit. Amen. And so that brings us to our fruit of, of today, goodness. Amen. Let's go to Galatians. Amen. Galatians. So Pastor Psyche says it's Galatians. <laughs> chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Okay. 
All right. Verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23. Meekness, temperance, temperance, self-control against such there is no law. And so right now we are, we talked about uh, gentleness. We talked about kindness, kindness um, in the New American Standard and other versions. And now we're talking about goodness. Amen. Now we're talking about goodness. So the word goodness um, in the Greek is agat- agatosune. Agatos sune. Agatos sune. Okay? I had to listen to that like 15 times. So it's agatos sune. It, the root word is agatos. All right? So good is agatos. Goodness is agatos sune. Amen? And so the meaning of goodness, the meaning of goodness is an active good. It means that you are actively doing good. It means benevolence. It means that you are choosing the betterment of that person to do good for the betterment of somebody else. And this, this is not something you can do in and of yourself. This is something that having spent time with the Holy Spirit... It pours out of you. Amen. Have anybody ever heard the expression, you know what? That's a good man right there. You know what? That's a good woman right there. Amen. Anybody ever tried to find a mechanic that was honest? (laughs) Anybody ever tried to find a a contractor, an electrician that would just want to do good? Amen. You... Good. Back in the day, people just used to do good by people. You didn't, you didn't have to get somebody else to check what somebody else did. You didn't have to do that back in the day. But nowadays, you got to find a good person. You have to find somebody that just want to do the right thing, right? Not charge you like uh, $500 in labor costs. <laughs> When the materials only cost $50. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You'll be like, man, really? This cost, you look at the itemized list, and you like, so you mean I only pay $50 for this, but this whole thing cost me $750? I thank God that me and Pastor Sack, we have a good mechanic. Amen. A good me- a man who does the work because he wants to do it well. A man who respects the church, who recognizes who Pastor Psyche is, that she loves God, amen, amen, and she cares for people genuinely. So when we talk about this goodness, amen, we're talking about an overwhelming desire to do good for somebody because it should be done. Even though you could get away with it, even though you could get away with it, you just want to do good. You just want to do right. I I can make my rate $200 per hour. I'm qualified to do so. I do have a player hater degree. I do have a PhD. I'm qualified. I can charge you $200 an hour. But because God is good... And I am acquainted with that good because God is good. So how do you you develop the quality of goodness? It comes from knowing the nature of God. It comes from experiencing the grace of God. Do you know about God's grace? Amen. When you know God's grace, it makes a difference in how you treat other people. So from the goodness of God, I always show goodness. Amen. And and, and this is the thing. This is the thing. When it comes to walking in the spirit of God, this is active goodness. 
Amen. This is not sitting and talking about it. This is doing it. And, and you do good and you do right by people, not just because it's popular. Right? So last week we talked about kindness. I think the Greek word is what? Chestotes or something like that? All right, I said it right. I, I, I got to practice. You got, I'm working on my Greek. Amen. Kindness tends to be gentle, right? It tends to be, you know, um, displayed in a soft manner, but not, n- not necessarily with goodness. Agathos, sune. Because with agathos sune, you, wa- you will do good even if it's going to take something that may seem kind of mean in order to get it done. Let me give you an example. Jesus Christ, amen, when, when, when Jesus went to the temple, and when he went to the temple, he, he noticed that they were selling things in the temple. Jesus got upset because he understands the purpose of the temple. The temple is not to make money. The purpose of the temple is for God's glory. So out, out of him knowing what goodness should be, he took and he was an advocate for the temples. He turned the tables over, right? Because he knew what goodness should be. Another example of act of goodness is the Shunanite woman, amen? Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4, the Shunanite woman, amen? 2 Kings chapter 4, verses uh, 8 through 11. 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. We taught that one year in vacation Bible school. <laughs> All right, 2nd Kings, chapter 4, okay, I'm starting at verse 8. It says, and it fell on a day that El- Elisha passed, in, passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be when he comes to us that he shall turn in thither (laughs) he's basically going to abide here when he comes verse 11 and it fell on the day that he came there thither and he turned into the chamber and he lay there now what's the big deal about this shunammite woman she perceived that this was a holy man. She perceived, perceived that this man was doing the work of God. She didn't just talk about doing good. She actively did good. She actively invited, invited him to eat. She actively, she spoke to her husband and she said, let's make a place for this man. Let's set up a, a, a table and a chair. Let's set up a place for him to lie down active goodness so many of us we talk about good things but sometimes we have to be good even in uncomfortable circumstances like Jesus was sometimes we have to be advocates for 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 other people amen even when it's uncomfortable Jesus was an advocate for the temple of God he he said you know what this isn't right this temple is to honor God He went in and he flipped the tables. Amen. The Shunammite woman, she went in and she said, you know what? I perceive I'm going to do this for this man. I don't even know this man. But I'm going to do this for this man because, because he's a man of God. Now, this is what we need to understand as people who are led by the Spirit. Sometimes you're going to have to be advocates and uncomfortable circumstances. 
Sometimes you're going to have to stand up for people because the only way people are going to experience the divine goodness of God is through his church. Amen. And we have to not be afraid to demonstrate God's goodness. We have to not be afraid to be advocates. Amen. And keep in mind, the enemy also has the evil there. Amen. So I'm, my mind goes back to the Central Park Six, Central Park Five. You guys remember the Central Park Five? Those five young men who were falsely accused of raping and killing a white woman in the park. You guys remember that? There were people who were quote unquote advocating for the white woman who died and who demanded that they be sentenced to uh, electrocution, who demanded that they, you know, all be sentenced to death. Now, we understand that the enemy wants to promote his agenda. Amen. But then you have advocates who stood up for those boys. And it took a very, very, very long time, many, many, many years for those guys to be exonerated. It took many, many years. But they were finally proven innocent. But when we don't stand up for goodness, when we don't do what we're supposed to do, when we don't advocate for the right things, they, these young men spent like 12 years some of them, 12 years of their lives in horrible situations. One of them was like 12 years old. Youngsters. But that's not the first time that happened. But we have to advocate for right. We have to show goodness, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable. Because God has called us to do that. But we need the Holy Spirit to stand up. We needed the Martin Luther King Jr.'s. We needed them to stand up. To this day, we need the, the, the Crystals. We, we need the Mother Mosley. We need Sister Carolyn. We need Brother Spider. We need each one of us to stand up and to advocate for goodness. But you can't do it by yourself. You need the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you. And you need to trust him for the results. Amen. So what we need to understand about agato sune is that it is active goodness. Amen. It's not just talking about it. It's not just thinking about it. It is putting goodness into action. Amen. So let us just ask God. Let us go before the Lord and ask him to show us where we haven't been good where we haven't demonstrated that out of fear, out of um, discomfort, out of thinking that that's somebody else's job. And let us ask him, Holy Spirit, demonstrate your goodness through me. Help me not to fear what other people may say, what other people may do, but to trust you to do good regardless of the circumstances. Regardless of the consequences, do God's will and trust you for the consequences. Lord, we're going to let you deal with the consequences. We want to be led by you into all truth. Lord, I recognize that there were opportunities to do good that I didn't take. There were opportunities for me to stand up and advocate for someone that I didn't take. Lord, I'm no longer going to walk down the street and see something happening and not allow you to use me to stand in the gap, to use me to run interference, to use me to spread the gospel. Let this be your prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So right now, we're going to open the doors of the church. Amen. We're going to open the doors of the church. Because we have Jesus Christ, because we believe in Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, what does that mean, Sister Courtney? That means to out loud say, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. 
I believe that Jesus, I believe that God raised the Lord Jesus from the grave. Come into my heart, transform my life. Give me a new perspective. Help me to not live according to my flesh, but to live according to your Holy Spirit who will lead me into all truth. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to put it in the chat, amen, so that we can contact you, so we can talk about it, so that we can discuss it, so that we can help you to find your rhythm with the Holy Spirit. That's our job, the job of the church. We're here to help you to find your flow so that the Holy Spirit can lead you, so that the Holy Spirit can guide you, so that you can manifest agape. You can walk in love. You can manifest joy, that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Amen. You can manifest gentleness, kindness, goodness, faith, faithfulness, self-control, meekness, long-suffering. We have to transform this world, beloved, but can only be done through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as we yield to Him. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand of praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, manifest your goodness. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the word. I want you to allow your heart to be good ground for the seed of God. Amen. So that then he can be able to transform because we have to transform ourselves or allow him to transform ourselves before we can transform the rest of the world. Amen. And it happens one person at a time, one family at a time, one block at a time, one community, one city, one state at a time, one nation. Amen. And it is a powerful thing. And so we just thank God for the word. Again, just a quick reminder, VBS on, um, started on tomorrow. If you want to just come out, be with us. It's an opportunity. We have so many people. The great thing about our location is that fish swim by you. You know, anybody know about fish? They just come right by the boat. And so whether you're working with the kids or not, it's just an opportunity to show some goodness, to show some kindness, to give some encouragement. Amen. And so if we haven't seen your face in a while, just come through just so that we can um, talk with you. We, there's always something to do to be able to minister to those that are going by, to be able to pray, to be able to share the good news. And so we're asking um, those of our members that are available just to come by. Um, and to help us with that, whether you want to work with the kids or just, um, you know, talk with me and be with me with regard to sharing the gospel with others. Amen. And so, again, if you if you have a need, if you're if you're a member and if you're connected here, the office just um, you can always call. You can always come by. The office is open Monday through Friday. Well, nine to one. But if you could do between 10 and noon. Right. So that we can, you know, the staff. <laughs> We, we, we are working here having some other things, but hey, between 10 and noon is a great time to come by so that we'll be able to, um, again, to account for you. We love you dearly, and we're glad that you're worshiping with us. And so let's, let's stand. We're going to give our final prayer, our final benediction. It is so good um, to see you. Can we, just give, can we just encourage our children, amen, on this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're just um, giving them opportunity to kind of train them up, build them up in God, right? So that, that they, um, they love God, right? And, and, and the things of God with us. So we are just grateful for them because we know how it is. Rehearsal may be just us. And then when other people are in front of them, it, it changes the whole game. But they did a phenomenal job on this morning. And we're just grateful for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes children got a lot more courage than we do. But I'm going to leave y'all alone on that. Amen. <laughs> y'all still sitting on your gift trying to get ready, get ready. Anybody watch the, the, um, the worlds? Amen. I, I, you know, I'm a former, former, my husband said put former on it, right? A former track and field athlete. But there's just nothing just seeing 
teams and people going for it. Amen. Being courageous. And so, God, we just thank you again just for another opportunity to come together. God, we thank you for your spirit revealing to us the truth of your word. We thank you for times of worship, of declaration of who you are through lyrics and through songs. We thank you for the, the, the musicians and the music that, that has a way of stirring our spirit. And so we thank you now that we've received your word with great joy. God, we're not naive that the minute we step outside of the doors, onto the sidewalk, as we drive home, as we enter back into our homes, as we are on the job tomorrow, that there are going to be things and circumstances, people, words and things that would try to rob us of what we receive today. But God, we, we're going to lay hold of what you have given us, that it may take root and produce fruits of righteousness in us. And so we're going to be tried on choosing goodness on this week. That which we receive is that which we're going to be tried on this week. But God, we're going to choose goodness. We're going to choose to speak good things and not bad things. We're going to choose to begin to be kind and gentle toward others, even when we're justifiably to get revenge. And so speak to us. Guide us on this week. And we pray that every need that is before you right now in your presence that's on the altar of our hearts, God, that you would minister to on this week. We thank you for just coming, covering us through grief, even yet still, that it hasn't sidelined us. And so, again, we ask you to, for your continued prayer for our bishop, Sister Evans, the children the leadership at Bethany Baptist Church, the members of Bethany Baptist Church, every friend, God, of, of, of Blair, every acquaintance, everyone that's grieving, that's in shock. God, we pray that we will not be shipwrecked. We seek the goodness of mercy and gentleness of your Holy Spirit that will allow us to journey through grief and settle in a place that will make us whole, that will heal our wounds and don't leave us shipwrecked destitute and desperate and in despair. And so we thank you again for everything that you're doing on our behalf. And we send your people together, send them forth with blessing. Let us continue to fellowship in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Let it rest, rule, and abide in us. Knit us together in your love until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Make sure you greet your brother and your sister on your way out with your mask on if you're greeting someone. But please don't just run out of here. God bless you. See you again soon.